On this episode of Lapeef, let's talk. Ninety-two uh, percent of the time, the, the children go to the mother. Eighty-six percent of the time, men are left financially ruined or in a financially worse position. Out of the two thousand shelters there are for women uh, for domestic violence or abuse, there's only one in the country for men. There, men are the majority of the prisoners, majority of the suicides, majority of the ODs, majority of the deaths. Majority men suffer. Men get an, uh, an incarceration rate uh, sentence when women commit similar crimes four times longer. Should I go on? Thank you, guys. There you go. I want to bring Kevin Samuels in uh, yes. real quick because he got his show at 10. Okay. All right. How right, you guys bring in, bring in that Kevin Samuels. Welcome, Kevin Samuels, to the show. What's going on, people? How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, doing great. Hey, about yourself. Good. What's up, Godfather? I like them watches that you picked up lately. Oh, yeah. You, know. <laughs> you, you want to go get the caps or you want to do the watches? Which one do you want to do? <laughs> We're going to do the watches. No, seriously, though, I've heard a lot of the back and forth. And one thing that I rarely hear from women in this conversation, whether we're talking high value, productive, competitive, successful men, or just men in general, is good faith. I'm always hearing this color purple. I've had the fights all my life. And all this stuff that I'm 52 years on this planet, and I don't see women getting beat and cheat like this. I didn't see nice. this. So why do we? Why do so many of our conversations devolve into, well, I'd rather be by myself versus this life that you can't tell me that most women are living, even the majority of women. This was part of the contention we had back uh, when you came over to my show, Tawana, this, yeah. this narrative that just is not rooted in any observable or even data-driven reality, but it's still real to far too many black women. Why is that? I can just speak it for me. I think that it's programmed, you know? Like yeah. when you when you go through um, certain things, you kind of program yourself to, you know, accept the negative first, right? You look at it that way, you set the negative first, and if something positive comes in, you're like, okay, well, it's like a surprise. You, you, you prepare yourself for the worst, right? It's not a good thing to do. I won't say that it is a good thing to do. It's not a good thing to just automatically preconceive, right? But when you go through stuff and you know that you're the reason why of it, it makes you leery when you, when you continue, because you're like always, you're the cause of everyone that you choose, right? Sure. So if you're the cause of everyone you choose and everyone you choose and it's an issue that's happening, you become scared about going forth with that because your decision when it comes to choosing is not that great. Right. So you become okay. hard. Okay. So, so, right. so one thing I hear, the, the programming, where mm -hmm. is that coming from? Um, I, I, I just guess in society, it's like you, you look at it as... Um, I'm not going to accept that. No, 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 exactly. Where's the programming coming from? What media. part of society? It's media. It's media. Family. Yeah, we'll say the it. The first it's transmitters media. of culture and knowledge is the mother. Yeah. So any media that comes in, comes in through the first transmitter of technology, the gatekeeper to the media, the mother, not the father. I completely agree. Why do you say not the father? That's because the fathers don't transmit culture. Fathers transmit standards and morals. Mm -hmm. But a woman can also learn how See, to... See, when I say things like this, this is not absolute. It's not either or. Okay. But, mother, but women transmit culture globally. It's not just in the Black community. Right. So if it is transmitted to women, it's being transmitted to women by women about men. But not then, all the time. I just don't agree that that's the only source. Okay, but that, okay, well, how about this? It's 51, it's 50.1% of the time. It's the majority. How about we work on the majority? Because this is where our conversation how about is going to we go. Responsibility so well, well because, because, because it's triage. Right. See, this is where we end up. It's always when we start going down the rabbit hole and start putting mm -hmm. accountability and, and responsibility mm -hmm. on the justifiable party. When it becomes the women, then we want to spread it out and make it about everybody. How about we get to the root of the cause and then we start worrying about parceling out equal responsibility after we actually 
get this start the surgery on the part that's killing us. I mean, I agree. I don't think that I'm trying to deflect from women's impact on that entire situation. All I'm saying is that we cannot look at it so absolute as if men and their I don't know who got that YouTube on. I keep hearing an echo. I'm sorry, y'all. But men and their responsibility in the home and their role in the home doesn't impact that as well. Well, okay, and and okay, and I gotta ask if we did it that way, it's 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 a distinction without a difference. If men don't control the culture, working on the men is wasted time. Why? So I get what you're saying, but in my particular situation of how I feel and what I feel, it didn't come from my actual mother. I was molested at 15 by my uncle, okay? okay. And I was raped at 19. Both black men, right? 15 years old, just babysitting kids. And I got something stolen from me twice, right? So I already had a pre- bad conceived about men before it even started that it was, my mom was the one who was trying to make me believe and, and, and console me that all men aren't the same send me the therapy and everything so it's not always that where it starts in the house even when my dad left it was my mama never never said one bad word about him ever you, she, you, she you, let you know what i hear more, you know what i hear oh, more than oh. anything in the, in the black community Mm -hmm. More than anything else, is the same thing I push on my channel. We need therapy. Yes, we there, need yeah. therapy. And here's the thing, yeah. Um, because this is when I start. People start saying I'm an asshole because I'm a 52 year old man, and I've had troubles too. I've had traumas too. I've had things that, and I'm not. And what we can't do is the oppression victim Olympics. <laughs> we have oh. to become a competent people. No one cares well. about our problems. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so unless we so we're at mm -hmm. the bottom. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only way we're going to get back to the top is to be together. Right. We are the only group of women who think that they don't need their men to live a successful life. I think the first question that you asked, Kevin, was because the question was centered around mm -hmm. should women just play their position and let their high value man cheat? So well, oh, how about you men don't cheat? They just exercise the option. But, 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 but here's the thing. <laughs> Exercising the option, cheating, whatever you call it, Kevin. Yeah. All I'm saying is our, my response was in response to that question. Like, wait, what do you mean? So we supposed to just say, okay, because I want a high value man, I'm just going to sit around and get cheated on. And that should be your expectation. And that's what you should go into the relationship expecting. And yes. no, I disagree with yes. that. Yes, I, oh, I disagree with that completely. Okay, so here are your options. Okay, let's take it away from 2021 and let's go back to 1200. If you wanted to marry the king, you're going to accept that you'll be mm -hmm. the queen, but he's going to mm -hmm. have a lot of mistresses. If yeah. you don't want it, you can go ahead and marry the butcher, the baker, the candlestick like the maker, the housemaid. <laughs> you and can do that. And see, here's the thing. Let, let me let me move it past the why. Why is it that? See, when I did that whole praise broadcast and high value men don't cheat, and I gave all those examples, I interviewed over 100 women who were married to high value men. And that's when I gave a presentation on what these women worldwide know and to accept. But you know what the minority is? The amount of black women married to a black man in there. Black women, you want loyal, productive, competitive, sexually fulfilling alpha males to bring home the, the bounty of the world to your feet. That only happens in Harlequin romances and Disney. Mm -hmm. So the notion of, if I got to accept a high value man, uh, well, look at, in our community, uh, Martin Luther King. Coretta Scott King didn't even marry after he died. She was mm -hmm. so bound to his legacy and what he had to do, she played her part. Jacqueline Onassis Kennedy, uh, her, Robert Kennedy and his brother were openly making the White House the Playboy Mansion. They shared Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. But yet, black women in this situation, what do you want black men to be other than a man? A superhero? Why? And see, that's the point. It's like you, you, it's like you want them to be something else, 
And what I yet to hear from any sister is what is good enough for a black man? Because just being competitive and making yourself in the top 10%, 5%, 3%, 1% of all mankind still ain't good enough. Can you give us some, some benchmarks on That's what not is? true. You spending the whole conversation. The problem is the cheating. It has absolutely nothing to do with them not being good enough. No okay, you you keep calling it cheating. Bill, okay. Wait, JR called it cheating, Kevin. Not to Okay, I, I get it. That's why cheating. I push you back. But I, I want to be clear because as the person okay. who would become synonymous with high value man across the internet, mm -hmm. I make sure what I talk about is clear. High right. value men don't cheat. We exercise options. Okay. This, and, and here's the thing. Bill Clinton was married to Hillary Clinton. Right. He exercised his options all around the place. And what did Hillary do? She, she stayed. She stayed. Right. And she reaped the benefits of that association. She could have chosen to pull it ever push the button and, and gone out. But would she have been able to go as far as she did? No, she chose to stay with her man. And some women do, for sure. For different reasons, and I already said that arrangements are not cheating. Right. Cheating, no, 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 no. Is, cheating is when you both think that the relationship is this way, and that man is doing something like Derek Grant, for instance, doing something behind that woman's back that he was well, not. We are from Black America, and I'm sorry, I, I met too many people who, when Big Daddy died, you met your whole entire other side of the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, what are we yes. talking about? Because because here's the bottom line: we can be morally right. Black folks love to be right and lose at the same time. I don't care about being right. I want to win. Right. So where we got all these moralistic? We're the most Christian, losingest group of people on the planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No. But we gotta talk no. about what he. I wouldn't do with that. What? Well, they kicking our ass. Yeah. No. Because they are together. Mm -hmm. Even right now, when I'm on my show and I even talk about, I don't want a high value man because I don't want to put up with cheating. All right. So you mean you could respect an average earning man and such and so right. forth as long as he's ambitious and want more than that? No, no, no. He's just he's just where he is. Mm -hmm. right. See, mm -hmm. what I think in the black, one of the biggest things that goes on between us in our community is one. I, I had a woman come on my show the other night and I'm going to profile it. My generation was raised by the baby boomers. And the baby boomers were the generation that turned their back on tradition. Right. The 1960s, was that, was that, which year was that? The baby boomers were born 1945 after. 45, okay. So, and then Generation X came through and that's a bunch of the 40 plus year old women and 40 plus year old men who were the most unmarried group of people in the history of history. Right, right. Um, the world is not set up for 60 year old bachelors and bachelorettes. It's not. So when we're sitting here basically saying, I would rather be by myself if a man cannot provide these things that most men can't provide. What most women are telling black men is, if you can't pay my bills, there's no value to you. I Listen, I said the opposite. I said, we need to start focusing on these average men. Mm -hmm. Because why are we so focused on the high value man who is, quite frankly, a, very difficult? If you ask me, it's a lot of things that you got to pull. And obviously, every woman is not equipped to deal with that type of man. And that's, that's just true. Well, and that's going to be my, one of my program next week. The program next week, we always focus on the men, the men, the men. And my question is, uh, who has the background noise? Yeah, please turn the... Turn your YouTube off, please. Yeah, I, I only have one. I mean, I only got one channel on. So. You gotta turn. No, I don't think it's you, Kevin. So my 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 uh, broadcast next week is going to be about can modern women really choose to just be a housewife? Right. Because there's so many women, especially in black community, who think they don't want to get married at 23 or 24, 20 because that's too young. But all of a sudden, around the age 30 all think that they can snap their finger and choose to turn to be a housewife right? Uh, with no wifely skills. See, what we need to, well, I think what we have to start doing is you mentioned Derek Jackson. Right. We need to start challenging the women more because it is easy to hold Derek Jackson to the fire. It's easy to roast him and cook him up because he's the, he's the self-love ambassador, the guru, whatever. Right. But what we're not talking about is that 32 year old black surgeon who was having sex with a man right. unprotected after she met him for a month and got pregnant. 
And that's what I was bringing up. I was talking about her because I was like, look, Derek Jacks had a whole affair with a doctor who was 32. So, but the thing is, we will, we'll, we, but the story is that the men are talking about Derek Jackson and the women are talking about Derek Jackson. When are the women going to talk about what the women do? Because right. in the cheating, take it away from high value. 28% of black men polled in relationships have claimed to be, uh, have cheated once on a partner. Right. But the number of women is 24%. Those numbers are not small. We both, the men and the women in our community, cheat at higher rates. Right. But until we really start sitting down and seeing what's going on with our women, and I think a lot of our women are going, I didn't catch your, your, the other sister's name, but a lot of our sisters, I think, are suffering from fear, scarcity, lack, and trauma that has never been resolved. Because so many never got a chance to be daddy's little girl, never got a chance to be protected because so many of us was born outside of mm -hmm. a nuclear family. So you, you, you're growing up and many of you are like, sisters more your mama is more like your big sister than your mama and so you get thrust into these adult positions and you're not protected when you're a young girl and things are allowed to happen because one in three black women re report having some sort of sexual assault by age 16. well if the men are missing in the home then that's probably going to happen yeah, but you gotta ask dad, why the men are not in the why, yeah, but right. you got but, but see before you get there, well, see y'all want to go back to the men. Okay, but we want to go back to the why the men are missing in the home. Let's find why let's find out where there's a kid in the first place with a woman. Right, right. Why well, why is why was that woman who has a kid not married first? Yeah, she was, but my mama was married, so that's not the that's not the, her mom. 80% of black married. children are born out of wedlock. Right. So but Kevin, this is what I'm saying. My mom was married. I think okay. I think with me and you. The problem was that, yes, I understand your side, but I don't agree with removing men completely from the conversation. Yeah. I do understand what you're saying, but I do see in a partnership, you have to examine both sides. You cannot say, well, the women- 80% out of wedlock childbirth, there is no partnership to speak of. Right. Well, there is because with some, they're sleeping with somebody. Yeah. They're sleeping. No, but but and, but hold on, hold on. Now this is where we're gonna really go off the rails because I'm sorry. Having sex does not mean you have to have a baby. If a baby happens, it's because a woman wanted to bring one into the world. That is 100 percent on women. So you can't talk about a father not being you can't talk to me, you cannot talk to me about a father not being in the household when most men are just having sex with women, not wanting to have a and not wanting to have a kid. See, you could it would be different. It would be different. It would be, your your argument to me would make more sense that if you're talking about a woman that was married to her husband and then they had a baby in the context of a marriage, and then the marriage dissolved for whatever reason, and he's not there. But I would that's go with my case. That. That happens. Well, let's take my case because that is my but case. But what I'm saying, ma'am, is that's that mine. may be your case, but 80 percent, it's not. Why are we talking about the? Eight women. Exactly. Why are we talking about the two instead of eight? Talk about, let's We're not talk talking about right. the two because we right. don't like holding women strictly accountable. I, I don't believe that we can hold a woman strictly accountable, but I do believe. But why not? Why not? I I totally believe men have been held accountable for years. Women have not, and so when we and it's always been where it's when a man tries to hold a woman accountable. It's like, oh, but what about the man? Oh, mm -hmm. but what about this? It's never just a focus on us. There's not a TV oh, really? show. There's not a book. There's always a Derrick Jackson that's going to be like, hey, okay, you might have some problems, but what about the man? Let's talk about the man. It's never a focal point. And if it's well, never a focal point, why is an issue with us? Why are we not getting married? Why are we having children out of wedlock? It's something to do with us. But Back in 1988, Back in I mean, 1988, when, Do back in 1988, when Sister Shahrazad Ali, yeah. 1988, when Sister Shahrazad Ali wrote the Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman and right. did the talk show circuits four years after the color purple, that woman was shouted down from coast to coast. And we are here 40 years later looking that she was absolutely right. She said it. Everybody in this country, in this world, has been examined except the black woman. She has been protected from consequences. She has been protected 
from her choices and decisions. When we start to try to do it, we start just want to, well, what about the this or what about the that? Everybody else in the world has had that happen to them. Black women, you can't keep, we cannot keep avoiding doing that difficult work of holding women strictly accountable like everyone else in the world is. I don't know one gender that has been held strictly accountable for anything that they've done though. Tell me exactly how men have been held strictly accountable, please. I, I'm well, I will tell you right now. When you look at the, you look at. Okay, you know, I'll get you. Know, here's some examples. Yes. Look at the family and divorce court. Okay, here's the divorce court. Uh, Ninety-two percent of the time, the children go to the mother. Eighty-six percent of the time, men are left financially ruined or in a financially worse position. Out of the two thousand shelters there are for women uh, for domestic violence or abuse, there's only one in the country for men. There, men are. The majority of the prisoners, majority of the suicides, majority of the ODs, majority of the deaths, majority men suffer. Men get an, uh, an incarceration rate uh, sentence when women commit similar crimes four times longer. Should I go on? So you feel that because. OK, okay can we, before I move, before I do that, can we at least acknowledge that that's. Absolutely. True? I agree with that. I agree with that 100 okay, percent. So, so, I feel so that, go ahead. if we want equality. Why don't we just start holding women accountable to the very same laws and, and things like you want that you hold men to? I believe right. women should be held accountable for their actions because no one should walk unscathed. And when you're pointing fingers, three of them point back at you. Nobody's walking perfect. So I, I don't, I, the, the, the feminist thing, the, the, I, I don't believe in none of that. Um, right. I, I honestly believe that women do get caught. A lot. They do. They get coddled. coddled. Absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. They get coddled a lot. Right? They get stroked a lot. Mm -hmm. but let, me read something. let me read something. There's a lot of resources. Let me, let me, read, let me read something. To reproduce oh, and oh, keep oh, the oh. Amazon race alive, the Themyscarans raid ships on the high seas to copulate with men. At the end of mating, they take their lives and throw the men's corpses into the sea rather than marrying them. Triumphant, the Amazons return to Paradise Island. Wait, Nine months later, then celebrate the birth of their daughter. Some don't. When they're when when and when male children are born, they're thrown into the sea and called failures. Now, if we had called this situation Wonder Man and flipped the genders, what would the world have said? If if men were raiding women, raping them, copulating with them, dumping them, and keeping the baby, would we allow that to happen as a society? Much less would we celebrate it? This happens every day with women. Every day you can sexually harass a man. Every day you can be aggressive with a man. Every day you can assault a man. And and, and it's, oh, uh, well, but then when we talk about holding women accountable, you say, well, in theory, I like it. But the only ones that are going to in practice do it is when women start clamoring that actually it starts happening. This is why men are tired of hearing this argument, because most women come across as being disingenuous because we because when it gets right down to it, most women don't want to hold women accountable because they still like the benefit of being able to wiggle through that too. I just see, I find it interesting because the, the reason we're not holding ourselves accountable, but that's the reason why we're in the situation that we are. Mm -hmm. What well, so you're in the situation you are is my, is my opinion. And thank you for having me on guys. I think one of the biggest reasons the black community is at the bottom is because in 19 in the 1960s when the civil rights movement came along women were enticed to join the ERA the women's struggle and join with them and black men women ain't never had the problems of black men that, that non-black or white women have had right black, i mean Stacey Abrams is being heralded as one of the reasons Joe Biden is in office but Stacey Abrams is 200 plus pounds educated and chronically single you are the super women of the world, but you are dying alone because of your inability to work with your mirrored counterpart. That is why on my show, women from Massachusetts to Oregon all say they want the same high value man, black man, knowing as an in, uh, inconsequentially small part of them. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you think or whatever. There are thousands of interviews over there and they will and they would rather be in line for him and hope to get him. I had a woman up there last night who makes $50,000 a year and wants a man making half a million. 
half a million. So when you can look as a black man and see that your mirrored counterpart would not even look at you, no one has, we don't need white supremacy, racism, all these other things. We do a good job keeping ourselves at the bottom because the women do not want to submit to a black man's authority in our community. Can't get around hey, that. Uh, I appreciate you. I know you got a show to do tonight. Oh, I want to respect your time. You. Oh, I got a few minutes. We got, I mean, I, I oh, go okay. to 1030. Well, we got go. a few more minutes. Let's, let's do it. We're here. <laughs> well, you know what, Kevin? When I was on your show, everybody expected me to curse you out and talk crazy to you, but I didn't do that. Do you agree with that? Well, I mean, there's no, yeah, I accept it. I don't, but exactly. that's not what I do. That's not what we were on the purpose of the show. And I'm glad that, you know, you came on the show so I could clear that up, that I was not disrespectful to you because you were not disrespectful to me. We were on the show to discuss a topic. And so let me just make that perfectly clear to, to our audience, um, because I got a lot of criticism for not talking crazy to you and calling you out your name, which I would never do. But anyway, I have to say because that's what that's what ain't happened on my show last night. That's what we expect. That's what they want, right? I, I, because I, that's what, that keeps us stuck. Yeah, I have to say, and something. I'm not stuck. Go ahead. Nick. But before, before, before I looked, before I decided or said I was going to do this, I did have a preconceived a notion about you for real, for real. I did. Um, and it was just off of looking at certain clips and stuff because your shows be pretty long, right? So mm -hmm. it, just looking off busy clips of stuff mm -hmm. of what it was, and and it was like, oh, this guy is an asshole, right? You do have asshole moments, right? But for the for when I took my own self out of it and really looked at you, you yeah, I, I'm gonna have to say I have to take back a lot of the stuff that I said as far as like how you do your approach is a little bit different and a little it rubs my me a, a little wrong a, a little way but I do understand why you do a certain thing because sometimes people do try to come for you by and so I understand the putting in place this is what the thing is but the overall senses of what you talk about or oh, I agree with about 70 to 75 percent of beforehand before really just kind of listening to it with open ears I'm like oh he just another man that hates women right i just think that you more of living your reality type of situation i think we're not we're not a, we're not accustomed to black men standing up with our chest out head up standing straight facing the world and saying unbowed i'm going to dominate mm -hmm. we're not used to that yeah so, so the thing is those are, but those are, but see forget me forget anton we're assholes. We're jerks. We cap. All that. Fuck up. Fuck us. Forget all of us. What about your sons? Are you putting your sons in positions to be the king that you say you want to have yourself? Because somebody raised the weak punk you got a problem with. Are you raising a king or are you raising a prince in panties? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't raise a king. It requires an Anton, a JR, a Kevin, an asshole. I, I agree. That's why yeah. I had to send my sons to their father. I, I agree with you 100%. At 16 and 18, almost 18 years old, I did everything that I possibly could. Their, their dad's been in their life forever, you know, since the beginning of when we separated. But as a mother, I know that it's so much that I can take two boys, two, right, and to a level. And it was the hardest decision I had to do to let my babies go, but they're not babies, right? Mm -hmm. They are because, growing because. men. Because so I had to let them go to their dad so that he can raise them properly because I can't teach a man how to because be Because when it gets right down to it, when we get out into in competing in the world, yeah. no other race of yeah. another other race leads with their women. The men are the warriors. Yeah. And I'm honest, you show me an army full of women, I'll show you a defeated state. That's why I use the Amazon and Themyscira and all this other kind of stuff because it only exists. And see, I understand why many black women would say, I would love to come under the submission and authority of a black man, but ultimately there's a low level lack of contempt and respect and just an overall fear of black males ability. Now there's some women who fear uh, what happens if they get, you know, power, are they going to do us like we did them? Mm. But they're more, that they honestly believe that black men have given given uh, when uh, power are going to abuse it, but that's not a man's nature. 
It is not our nature to abuse power. It is our nature to draw a circle around the things we quote unquote love and protect them. We are benevolent dictators, but we're dictators nonetheless. And we repel threats and care for what's in here. So while you got black women saying, I, I, I don't trust that black men can do it like I can do it. All right. Well, you're taking on all that pressure of the world. Pressures are made for shoulders, not hips. You, you will break down in this world. You will break down because this world is not meant to be out, handled out here by yourself. It's meant to be handled in I just groups. don't know what, we are do, what we're going to do because women are, they've come so far, right? They're, women are already in this place that we are trying to like digress and go backwards, Kevin. I don't know what you, I don't understand. Like women are already successful. They are already... You know, get in degrees, already accomplished. Not really. They, I, I disagree. Not, not really. I mean, the numbers don't support that. The, the statistics show that more women the are most enrolled. You're the most enrolled. You're not the most educated. Okay. The largest well, two, the largest two employers. Of, okay. The, the the true the largest two employers of black women are the federal government and retail. So what now, are we asking hold on, women? Hold on, to hold on, hold on. Let me say this, this is important. Backwards? In the okay. la listen, in the well, you're going backwards already because in the last four months we have we have sustained what's called a she session, a female recession. In one month, in December, we lost eight hundred and eighty thousand jobs with right, women. Five million for women on national. So that that's you. So, so right. at the end of March, when all of that deferred rent comes due, it's already backwards. See, the problem is women believe they are someplace where they are not. And reality is about to show you real quick that you're not ahead like you think you are. I didn't say but, they were ahead, but where do you start? With well, I, I, okay, first, the, first you, the first thing you start with is humility. Yeah. Humble. I say the it all average the time. black woman is far too prideful, far too egotistical to even understand they need the help. Right. So um, here's the one thing, whether you're a Christian or not, pride come before the fall. Either you'll bow down or you'll get knocked down. <laughs> it's not one. It's not us. The world is coming to knock you down because when when Neiman Marcus finally goes out of business, and these women who've been in, in the federal government working in the post yeah, office start losing their jobs. Right. They'll start realizing that the very men that they turn their nose up are the very men they're going to need so they don't have to eat cat food. This so is why I say pride, humility, I mean, some humility. And before you can start working with the men, what are you doing with your boys? Show right. me what you're doing with your boys. Show me what a woman's attitude is with her boys versus her daughters. And I'll show you if that woman is a woman that can be saved. If I see a woman that's telling her, making her boys, putting them in Jordans and pampering him and telling her daughter to go to school and get an education, can't save you. If I see a woman that's saying, you know what? I don't, I pick poorly for his daddy, but I'm going to try to see if I can get Mr. Anton or Mr. Kevin to come over here and I'm going to pay him to be a mentor because he don't owe me nothing. And I'm going to, if I got some resources, I'll make sure my boy get the big piece of chicken. I'll make sure my boy gets this because we need men to run this black community. Don't leave your daughters impoverished, but you have to prioritize your boys. Right. And if a woman's not willing to do that with her boys, gentlemen, there's no shot for her doing it for you.